Um, thanks everybody for joining us today. Uh, this is our live with astronomer session. We do these every other week. Um, these uh, sessions are short, so we keep them 10 to 15 minutes and they're very developer focused. So um, we're going to jump into a lot of code, not a lot of slides, except for this first one that I have up. Um, just want to take a second before we dive into the content today um, to make a few plugs for the Airflow community. Um, as I said earlier, we'd love to have you all join the Airflow Slack. Um, that's a great way to connect with us and everybody else in the Airflow community. Um, so we'd love to see you there. We do have a couple of upcoming community meetups, uh, very upcoming, two tonight um, and one tomorrow, in case any folks out there happen to be in any of these places. I saw some East Coast folks in the chat. Um, there's a meetup in Washington, D.C. tonight. Um, we've also got a Silicon Valley one tonight and a Portland, Oregon one tomorrow that I will be at. So if you happen to be in any of those locations, um, I will throw some links in the chat, um, meetups to sign up. Also, some other great uh, content coming up, uh, women in analytics webinar that we'll be focusing on uh, airflow and pipeline design best practices coming up in a couple of weeks. So I'll throw in the link to that as well. Um, my last plug before I kick us off um, is if you have any use cases that you are interested in um, having a content spotlight on or blogging about um, on Airflow's Medium blog, uh, definitely reach out to us. I'll throw my email in the chat as well. Um, we would love to hear from you. So that's it for me. Um, we'll get on to the content here. So super excited today to have Grayson from our field engineering team on with us. He's going to be talking us through the uh, new VS Code extension that he built. Um, it's going to help with your Airflow development. So um, I'll go ahead and hand it over to him. Uh, if you have any questions as we go through, feel free to throw them in the Q&A feature in Zoom or in the chat. We will save a couple minutes for those at the end. And with that, we'll go ahead and hand it over to you, Grayson. Thank you very much, Kenton. Hello, everyone. I'll go ahead and share my screen here. Thank you so much for taking the time today. We, uh, everyone can see my screen, we good? You're good. Okay, awesome, cool. So uh, thank you so much for taking the time. Um, uh, we're, today we're going to be looking at um, this Airflow templates uh, VS Code extension um, that I wrote to really help the um, developer experience that you have, uh, you know, with your workflows and uh, building DAGs. Um, I'm on the field engineering team here at Astronomer. Uh, I work with a lot of customers, uh, and you know how Airflow sort of fits within their technical stack. Um, and, you know, technical solutioning for them. And so a lot of the things that I do is I'm writing DAGs every day. Um, and in uh, December, Astronomer had a hackathon. Um, and the first idea that I had was I was thinking, you know, I use VS Code and I wanted to, you know, uh, write DAGs quicker. And I was really surprised that there's there's not a lot out there, um, uh, you know, for, for having like a boilerplate DAG or just something to get me sort of like off the ground when I'm beginning to develop a DAG. And then as I as I started working on it, there's also, you know, uh, all of these community building boxes. You know, one of the reasons why Airflow is so popular is because it's got all of these uh, community built packages and providers uh, and people that put a lot of effort and energy and code into these these packages. And uh, I wanted to be able to actually load those all um, locally as well. Um, so I'll show you the provider. So this is the um, the extension it's called Airflow Templates. And then so here's all of those provider packages. So the idea is, is that, you know, I, I, I've been, you know, working with Airflow for a few years and I feel like I have a, a fairly decent experience with it, but then uh, so many times I've always been like, oh, I didn't even know that was a provider. Uh, I didn't even know that was an, an opportunity to do that. And then, you know, uh, most, a lot of times, you know, um, I, you know, working as a data engineer, uh, you know, uh, sometimes I uh, try and uh, write a lot of this code uh, within Airflow myself using the Python operator. Um, and then if there's not, if there's an operator or a hook or something that's already written for me, you don't really have to. So this sort of should, should help, um, with that workflow. Um, so that being said, let's go ahead and go over to, um, we'll go over to my IDE that I have open here and I'll show you the, um, uh, the airflow templates extension working in my environment. Uh, so I have a, uh, a test DAG here that I have. It's an empty DAG file, um, that's running in my container environment. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just write DAG. And so this is initially what I wanted here. You can see in the preview, it's sort of just like the baseline DAG. So many times I would forget like where some of these arguments went and it was just like a really pain, like I'd be copying it from somewhere else and it wasn't always handy. I wanted it like immediately. So I write DAG here and I have a baseline DAG now that uses the empty operator, which is great. I use I have a, the Python operator. So it's really the beginning point for solutioning, right? 
uh, in terms of like, um, you know, building out a, um, um, a DAG and, and a workflow based on the re requirements that I have. But so now I want to show you um, how you can use it to help with like, you know, um, developing a pipeline in general. And so let's just use like a thought experiment of, of uh, uh, we're using say from like Google Cloud Storage to Tableau, for example, like, and uh, we might want to talk about like, what are the options that I have available to me? How, how am I going to be able to develop this uh, in Airflow specifically for our, for our stack? So um, what I'll do is I'll go down here and we'll look at um, GCS to S3. And in this case, maybe I'm working with an Azure, an Azure stack. I'm sorry, um, an AWS stack that I have on my side, and the Google, Google Cloud Storage is like maybe some files that I'm, you know, some some polling uh, I'm having access to, right? So uh, this is the operator that's been written for me here, and that's a part of the um, the extension. And so I can click this here, and I now have this operator as a task. It's ready to be like imported into uh, the DAG itself. And so um, I have all of the arguments that came from the provider package website in this cloud IDE where I'm familiar with reading stuff. Sometimes like the format might not, you know, match exactly. And it doesn't really like speak to me or I can't really like understand it as super, super good. But like when I see like all of the arguments here, like I can, you know, I'm a lot more familiar and I, I trust and I know like how this operator works. I may have like, some experience with the GCS to S3 operator, but um, you know, now I know that I have all of these arguments that come from that package. And one thing that's where there's a, you know, uh, where this is powerful is that, um, you know, you might um, be familiar with this operator or you might, um, uh, you might have found it somewhere on the web. Like you Googled like, hey, I need to move this from here to here. And then that specific example had like those arguments built in for it. And they didn't use like all of them. But now you have, you know, you have the flexibility, to, you know, with this extension to know like everything, like S3 Apple policy. That's something that someone wrote that you have access to and you can use it or, or not use it, but at least you know that it's there. Um, so many times um, in my, you know, I've, I've worked as a, a data engineer with a lot of Databricks and uh, I didn't even know that some of the arguments are like built in for me or some of them are like defaulted to turn on true um, until I really started like, you know, uh, getting more familiarity with a lot of these operators. So back to this, back to this mock pipeline that we're writing. So we have, uh, we have this S3, so now let's go ahead and go to the transformation side. So if I'll go over here and we'll like, we'll use Databricks for the, for the transformation as a part of this. And I'll use the uh, run now operator. And you can see now I have like the run now operator and all of the arguments that are available for it. And I can, uh, I can pull that in now. So now I have sort of two tasks uh, that I have uh, built in here. Um, and I have um, two tasks. And so I'm starting to like work through this. And as a, on the data engineering side, on the airflow side, on the airflow engineering side, I know that all I really need to do is, you know, start to connect these things, these tasks together with connection IDs, you know, with, with, with you know, certain like configurations. And that's really what Airflow DAGs are, their configurations. And I know that like the hard work might be for the Databricks or, you know, more challenging work might be, you know, within the, uh, the specific notebook that I have, like all the, the Spark engineering that I need to do. But um, from a solutioning aspect, I know that I can go from, G, um, you know, from Google Cloud Storage now to Databricks and I have a bunch of community code that's written for me um, in this Airflow environment. So um, let's go ahead and visualize this data now. Do, do we have any questions in the chat? I can pull that up. Grayson, no questions yet, but do you mind just uh, zooming in a little bit so the font is a little bigger? Sure, sure. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so uh, we'll take a now with this, this larger font, we'll go back here. So we have, like I said, the baseline DAG that we looked at, and then we have the GCS to S3 operator, um, and then we have the Databricks Run Now operator. Um, so we had a question about version dependency. So that's this is a super simple extension. And it, what it does is it pulls the most recent version that is uh, of all of these operators uh, from that Apache Airflow website that's connected to the GitHub repository. So that's one thing that's important to, to call out. And thank you for that question. Is that you know as astronomer we work on these containerized we, we work in a containerized environment of Airflow. So my local Airflow, um, you know, it doesn't have these packages loaded that I have, or I may not even have local Airflow. But I, um, you know, I still want access to be able to work on that locally, and then the containerized version that I'm deploying to can have all those dependencies that I need. So it, this is not IntelliSense for you know these operators. You're not going to have a lot of dense information, um, and that's just to say like it's it's simple, but it should really help with the workflow itself. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and we'll, we'll go back to this pipeline. So we've done our transformation with Databricks as a part of the solution and exercise. And then uh, we want to do like Tableau, for example. So that's a part of like a visualization might be for it. 
And so I'll look through Tableau here and we'll scroll down and we'll look at um, all the options that Tableau has, has for me. And it looks like I have a Tableau operator. So I'll go ahead and pull that in. So I now know that I have, and also uh, with all, each of these, I have the import statements that I'm working at. So if I have that container version that I can just put that at the top and, you know, I might have an import error for, uh, you know, for local, but uh, I know that in the container, it's going to be able to work. And I can also, you know, using like the Astro CLI, I can test this locally still without having to deploy it anywhere. So um, I have the Tableau operator, that's good. And then as a, a last piece of this, like um, if I was getting this as a requirements as a data engineer, I'd feel comfortable, you know, that I'd be able to at least, you know, like have a, a good swag on how much time it's gonna take me to do this based on all this, you know, this code and these operators that are built for me. Um, and maybe you need to now, um, you know, do a messaging, uh, a message out to the team that you, you built this data product and there's a visualization on top of it. So you might use something like, you know, if your team has like Discord. So I have the Discord, operator task here that's available. Um, and so I can, you know, I can uh, pull that in. And so each one of these now I can start to format and get into my DAG and, you know, take these tasks and put them, uh, apply the bit ship operator and build these tasks out, make sure that the connections are all there. I can, you know, maybe use the UI to, to build that out as I, you know, continue to, to, to work towards this MVP product for this specific pipeline. But I've gone from GCS cloud storage to um, you know, a data product that maybe that's in Tableau um, with a visualization, and then I have uh, the messaging you know component out there for that. So that's a good example on how you can you know cut down time using this extension and really help with the you know the developer experience that that you give to you know to, to your team and you know uh, your group in terms of like you know understanding what's available and what are the capabilities of Airflow and uh, the pipeline that you're building. So. With that, that was a very, it was a very specific example, right? It was a very specific example, and you may not, um, you may want to say like, oh, well, well um, uh, what are some other opportunities that I have with this extension? So if we take a look at something that like all cloud providers will have, or there's something, there's something that there is a lot of community, you know, things around. You have like the SFTP operator. So you uh, have the SFTP operator. We'll go ahead and we'll look through here. So now. I can begin to actually do discovery with this if I hear like a piece of information that I'm not 100% sure about. So I know I have SFTP as a part of this pipeline, and I know I have different bits of my stack that I can use, maybe HDFS um, storage for, for my pipeline. Um, so then I can, you know, I can look and see what's available to me, you know, who's written some, uh, and these are all provider packages that have been peer reviewed. Um, and, uh, you know, I can trust the, the components that are in here um, uh, to, to be able to, you know, facilitate this task. Um, so I have Amazon, I have Google, Microsoft, SFTP to blob storage. I know that those have been, you know, those have been taken care of for me. And then I also know, like, if I pull that in, I have every option that's available um, that's been written out for me. And if it's, um, you know, if it's not there, you know, you can go and you can find this specific operator and you can, you know, you can contribute to the package to add it. But at least you'll know that, like, these are all the options. And you can say, like, um, I may not want one of these or I may want some of them, those types of things. Okay, so, um, so let's go ahead and we'll take we have another question. Will VS Code populate parameters when I type a decorated operator like at task or at task group? So within the task flow API, um, you might want to use maybe like a hook or something, right? And if you, um, you can put, uh, you can use this to populate any of the hooks or, you know, potentially any operator that you want inside that, inside that task. But the idea would be like, say, if you want to wrap, if you want to wrap an operator or a hook in a in a task, you just know that this extension is a will give you access to all of the building blocks that have been provided from Airflow. Okay, so let's go back here. So at at, at a high level, um, at a high level, that's that's really sort of like what Airflow templates does. Um, you know, with this VS Code extension, it, it's super simple. Um, and I'll, I'll go back, we'll go back to the website here. It's super simple. It just pulls in all these provider packages and e each one of the, um, the arguments that are provided in there. Um, and one thing that I became really familiar with, and I think I, maybe my own journey, you know, through data engineering is that um, for that SFTP example, like I would know that like, I, I know how to pull from SFTP and I know how to write to, um, you know, HDFS, but I um, would want to use that operator if it was available. So that's something that um, 
you know, initially I might have done it with a Python task decorated operator, and then I would just move over to say that SFTP to, uh, to Azure Blob Storage, like that works for me. And then if you dig into actually the operator, it's using some you know, really Pythonic code and really, you know, uh, some of the, the, the most performant code. So you have that now as a part of your pipeline um, that you write when you make sure to like, you know, lean and use all of these resources that you have available to you. So um, that being said, um, we'll go back to some limitations for this and sort of where what astronomer, you know, what they want to do with this extension or with this idea of making provider packages more available. So we will be, um, you know, working on um, uh, making this outside of VS Code uh, available in other IDEs. And the idea would be to maybe potentially, um, you know, this, 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 uh, it, these snippets, they don't really have like a lot of the information as to like the de the, uh, the description on what blob prefix is, what are the options that I can put in there, or, um, you know, like, uh, what, what does it do for my code, or what does it do for this specific task. So having that information when you have like IntelliSense loaded with uh, the, the, require, um, the requirements loaded is something that we want to sort of like bring together. But you can use this as definitely as a part of a, you know, your solutioning for um, developing. It's definitely a good start that should help you save some time. And um, I think with that, um, that's an overview of everything that we have. Um, if we had a few questions, we can take some time to answer some more of those. Awesome. Thanks for going through that, Grayson. I think we just have a couple of other questions. Um, one was, are there any prereqs for using the templates with local airflow? So I think um, we're VS code installation, right? Should be. So you'll still need to add the requirements to um, say like your container on deployment, but um, that's one of the benefits that I, that, I, that I saw was that there's no, I don't have any, uh, it, I, I wanna go look for Tableau before I begin to like, download things and bring in requirements. I want to see what Tableau, like what Discord, you know, I want to go look for those things before I really start to pull the requirements in. Great. I think one last one, a follow-up question on how it works with decorators. So somebody asking um, if you have an at task decorator for a Python operator, I'm assuming, um, is it going to help you fill in the arguments for that? It's just for the provider packages. So yeah, that's something that I've, I've thought about uh, doing and uh, is, is including. So if we go back here, um, this, this, this uh, SFTP, or we'll use the Databricks operator as an example. So this operator, these are all the provider specific packages arguments. It's the, uh, if you dig into the code, right, it's, it's, it's pulling from the, um, the, the base hook or the base operator. And there's a lot of other like airflow specific arguments that are available. So this isn't just the end result. This is the provider specific. So um, we, uh, when I have that at task Python decorator, like there's a ton of base arguments that I can use to, um, uh, you know, arguments that I can use to um, configure the DAG, but I haven't put that in there, but it's definitely something we're thinking about um, including as well as like what to include because there's a, there's a huge list of them. Awesome. And before we go, Grayson, do you mind just throwing the link to um, the VS Code site that has the installation instructions in the chat? I think that will answer that last question. This will have um, how you can install this extension. You can go from there. You can also do it from within VS Code if you work that way. Yeah, yeah. So um, you can, uh, there's the web version of it. And then also, if you just search for Airflow in the extensions, um, you'll find uh, a list of all of the um, Airflow extensions for VS Code. And this, is, this one is on there as well. Awesome. Um, well, thanks again for going through that, Grayson. That was all the questions we had. Um, this is super, super helpful. Um, I'm already using this in my own DAG development. So I'm very excited to see this evolve over time. Um, thanks everybody for joining us today. Uh, be on the lookout for more events. We do these every week. Um, so we hope to see you at another event soon. And we hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much. Bye.